In this video, I'm going to go over how to build some advanced functionality into the fill out form and connect that with smart suite. So if you're interested in how to set up default values and specific fields or add pre-filled values from other areas of your database and workflows, then definitely check this one out. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach Stevenson. I am a business processes and no code consultant. If you have questions about streamlining your processes, send me a message or book a free consult using the link in the description below. Welcome to our channel where you will learn how to save hours of your time every single week. Okay, to get started here, you're going to want to log into your smart suite account. So once you're logged in, you can go into here, add a new solution, and we are going to create a new solution from scratch. So start from scratch. Uh, first thing we can do, we can delete all of these fields. Uh, we don't need any of those and we're going to be setting up our own. Okay. Next thing we can do, we will rename the solution here. So we'll just call this cake order form is what we're going to be doing is we're going to build a solution and then connect the fill out forms to it. And we're going to allow customers to uh, submit order forms to our solution. And then the next part we're going to do from there is we're going to allow customers once they picked up the order, um, maybe a couple days later, they can receive an automated email and it will allow them to click that link and it will open up a comment or a review form. And then when they submit it, it will automatically link back to the order record. So we'll go through how to set up all of those elements. Um, so yeah, first go ahead and name your solution and you can pick an icon, whatever you want it to be. Doesn't really matter. And we can get, um, so it's called a cake order form. The first application here, we want to call this orders. And we're going to have three different applications. So the one is orders. So that's our, our main order where we're going to capture the customer name and email address. We're going to set up a second application in a second here. Um, and what it will do is select all of, or allow the user to select each item they want within the order. And then the last one is just a very simple uh, application and it will collect the comment or review information that uh, the customer ends up entering. So I'll go through step-by-step step how to set up each of the, um, before we go too far, once you've deleted all your field, uh, we can just duplicate these so that we don't have to do them for uh, each application or so that we don't have to delete all those fields for each application because we won't need them in this case. So we can go ahead, select the orders there and click duplicate. Uh, this one, we want to call this items or line items. Doesn't really matter the name. And we'll go ahead and we will duplicate this again. And we can call this comments or reviews or whatever you want. So I'll just call this reviews slash comments. And we can duplicate that app as well. First thing, we would want to collect the username. Currently with that, they do not have a uh, field types integrated yet. So what we can do is just set up a text field. Normally we would probably want a full name field, uh, but we'll go text for now, rename it to name. And what else we might want in the order form or we will need is the email address and select the email. We can add a date field, and this is going to be the pickup date or requested pickup date. And the next one where this is going to be a link record. So we're going to link this one to our line items. So we select the linked record field type, scroll down here to select linked app, and we want to link line items and we can allow it to link to multiple records because we could have multiple line items, multiple order items within the order. So I'd add that. Um, two other ones, we're going to set up a formula, um, and we will not be able to finish this one quite yet, but we'll add a formula field. And this is going to be called just the review link. And this is going to be the link that after they picked up the order, however many days after you can set that part up as an automation, we won't do that in this tutorial. Uh, we'll just call this a review link and we'll email to customer. So it's just a note for ourselves to know that that's who we will send it to. And for the time being, we'll put some placeholder text. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to want to do, we're going to link 
eight field. And we're going to link it to the reviews and comments. So we have our first application set up. Um, the last thing we may want to do is change this primary key and we'll just call it order ID and we'll make it an auto generated field and we'll just do, we can do whatever we want, right? We could maybe do name and the created date and the created date is pre-built in. So we don't have to add that to our application. It's the first created on. So there, our first application is set up. Now we can go into the second application and get that one set up as well. Um, we just need a few fields, obviously, uh, depending on your use case, you may need to get more complicated. Um, but for our use case, this will be, and that's going to be a number field. Here's where we name it. So we can just leave that as is. So we're just going to create a number field and call it how many dozen. So that's going to be how many dozen of the order that we're adding. Now the next two are going to be single select fields. So we're going to have a cupcake type and we're going to have an icing type. So this one will be single select, name it cupcake type. And then from there, we can add the different cupcake. So we'll keep it real simple, uh, chocolate and vanilla. Then from here, we're going to add another single select field and we're going to name it icing type. And the icing types, we'll add a few different ones. We'll call peanut butter icing, chocolate, and vanilla. And then from there, we can add that field. So this one, this application is basically set up. You can also create a, another line item ID. That's going to be auto generated as well. And from there, we can do a similar thing. We could bring in maybe the cupcake type. Bring in the icing type and we can bring in order ID as well. And it will be there as the link to orders field. It's not being displayed right now, but when we created, I'll flip back quickly here. When we created the link to line items, it created the recipient um, field here, but it's just in the fields to display. It's currently hidden, but we can just click in to the fields to display, go down to link orders, and it will show here now. So, and the last thing, I'll set up the last one while we're at it. And this one can be really simple as well. So into the fields to display, because we already created the link to the orders or link to the review slash comments in the orders app. So we can display it and we're going to create one more. It's going to be text area. And this is where customer is going to be able to write in their comments or view. And I will show you how that's going to be set up momentarily as well. And just like the last two applicate, we're going to rename this one. We can call it repeat ID and we'll again, make it auto generated and we can just do order, like the order and then bring in the created on or created date. So first created and we update that. So our solution is basically ready to go. Um, there is one last thing that we will have to change back in the review link field that we set up. So that's our formula field, but we will not be able to add that until we get fill out. So if we go back over to fill out and you'll have to set up a fill out account again for both smart suite and fill out, you can find the links in the description below. Uh, if you use those links, they are affiliate links. So if you end up uh, making a purchase through one of those softwares, uh, there will be a little bit of kickback at some point in time uh, for me. So yeah, that'd be greatly appreciated if you did sign up with one of those links in the description below. Uh, so once you're logged in, you can go set up a new form. Uh, in my case, I've already made the connection to smarts, but it's pretty straightforward and I'll just run through it quickly here. Um, so new form. Click the connect, um, click this, another integration link, and then we'll select smart suite. So for me, I've already got it connected, but if you do not have it connected, 
you'll just have to bring in your API key, um, which is found up in the top right profile of Smart Suite. And if you select that and click API key, you'll be able to find it there. And the other piece, you'll need the workspace ID, which is the first set of um, characters after the app.smartsuite.com. So there should be an eight character or alphanumeric characters here. And that's what you would copy in. So those are just the two elements that you uh, to connect, uh, fill out to Smart Suite. So back into fill out the first form we're going to create, we're just going to choose a theme that's been pre-built. So I just select plain. Here's where you would make your connection. It's already been added. Um, so once you've made the authentication, you can go select the order form and ours is called cake order form. And I want to connect it to the order. So I want to make the top level order first. And then from there is where we'll create the additional orders or line items within the order. So we'll go ahead and create that form. Name it whatever you want. We'll just call that order form. And the neat thing about this is on the left side here, some of these fields are already found. Uh, this is where I made a brief mention of it earlier at some point, and hopefully in the near, near future, fill out, we'll have the integration for the full name field. But for the time being, it's just going to be a text field type that we have to add to a smart suite. So we'll bring in the name, we'll bring in the email address, we'll bring in a requested pickup date, and we will bring in the link to line items. So from um, name, pretty self-explanatory. If you select it, it gives you all sorts of options down here, logic, validation, so on. And uh, we want to allow our customers to enter whatever name they want to put in here. We don't need any placeholder information. Could add a caption to say, enter your name that will show up below. Um, but again, it's pretty self self-explanatory. Here's our email field. We don't need to do much there. The requested pickup date. So this is where I'm going to show you how to use the default field. Um, it's up to you. You can leave it blank, but let's, uh, obviously, you know, if someone's submitting an order today, chances are you're probably not in a position where you can drop everything and uh, make the order. So let's say you have a rule that it has to be a minimum of three days out, or you want to give them some sort of direction or instruction to say, you know, select your request to pick up date, but we'll be in touch to um, confirm orders are minimum three days prior. Yeah. Well, for, and what we may want to do um, to make it simpler for the user, we can go in here to the default value and we'll add a reference, go into the date utilities and we want to do n days from now. So we'll insert that and we'll use three days from now. So the default value will be when you preview it and publish it, and it's already populated it here. It's three days from today's date. Um, and then they click the date picker if they want to change it. Uh, the next thing we can rename this here and we'll just call this items and we'll leave that as add. So selected here, what I want to do is click this can select multiple. We're going to allow them to create new records and we only want to show them new records. So this is going to allow the customer to add multiple line items to their order. They're able to create new records. Obviously that's what we want them to do. And we only want it to show new records. We don't want to show existing records. So from here, we want to edit the record creation form. So this is the kind of internal form within the, so top level orders. Now we're creating the line items order form. So basically what we're allowing the user to do is add multiple record of all from kind of one application or one form. So this will become uh, preloaded for us. This top one line item ID, that's the ID field. Get rid of that one. Do not want them changing anything there. Um, so here we do want them to change how many dozen or uh, we can just leave it as how, how many dozen, I guess that should be fine. So then from there, we can see it's brought in options as well. So this is kind of each line item. What we may want to do is change the name. So we'll just call this add to order. So when they go ahead and uh, fill out this form here, they're going to change, you know, add 
number, uh, how many dozen that they want, the cupcake type, icing type, they'll click add to order, and then they'll have the option to add more. So if they want a different flavor or a different icing type, uh, they can go ahead and add as well. So that's a pretty quick and easy, simple setup. We will return back to the parent form. And from here, we should be ready to go. We can probably publish it now. Maybe one other thing we want to do, here's the ending. So let's turn off the confetti and we can change the name here to order submitted. We can add whatever additional information we will be type soon. And then in here, you can add, you know, different types of information, images, add paragraphs and headings and banners and different information. We can have an additional fill again button. We can direct them to other URLs. Uh, we can also automatically redirect them to a website or another location if that's what you need in your mini app here. Um, but other than that, we should be good to go. We can go ahead and click public. And from there, we can go ahead and give it a test. So um, what we want to do, I'll click here. And once your form opens, you can go ahead and add name, email address. Uh, I'll leave that as the requested pickup date, but you can select it and choose a different date as well. We'll add additional items. So this is now opening up additional form or kind of a sub form. So let's, we're going to put in two different types of line items. So we're going to order 12 or one dozen of vanilla with chocolate icing, and we'll add that to the order. Then what we can do, we can click add again. This time I'm going to order two dozen of chocolate with peanut butter icing, and we submit that. Then from here, if we're done, we can go ahead and click submit order and we can see that the order has been submitted. Now, if I flip back to our order solution, we can see the main order has been submitted here with the line items as well. So they've been able to put in their multi-line item order. So that's all been connected so from here you know, as a company owner or business owner or whoever looks after this stuff and go through, see exactly what's been ordered, the contact information, um, and it all connects and relates. So that's basically, you know, a little more advanced or a deeper level tutorial of how to have the order form set up. Now what I'll show you how to do is use the prefill option within uh, Fillout. So that's where we're going to use this field now. So we're going to go back into Fillout. We're going to create a new form. So we're going to go ahead and click new form. We're going to make a new connection, click the, another integration, smart suite, and I'll pick the same theme. Go ahead, click next. The connection should already be made now because we made it on the last one. So we'll go into the solution here. We'll pick um, the cake order form and reviews this time. So from here, we'll click create form. call this uh, order comments. And then what we're going to do is from the left side, there's two options we're going to bring in. We're going to bring in the link to orders. And we're going to bring in the reviews and comments. So the reviews and comments is really the only field that we want the customer to see. This is where they're going to write in uh, their feedback to work to you and have them submit it and it will get automatically connected to the order form. So we can leave this one as is. But it's this link to orders that we are going to um, change some of the settings. So if you select it, click the gear icon, uh, it should open up on the left side here. So there's uh, kind of two main things that we want to do. Um, the first one is we want to uh, go down to the logic here and we're going to always hide field. So um, anytime this form gets open, this is going to be hidden. Um, the reason it is here is we're going to go into this default value. And there's this plus icon here. Um, first though, what we have to do is go into settings, the URL parameters, and we're going to add a new one. So we're just going to call this record and we can add that parameter. Then we can go in back into the edit 
select link to orders. And then in the default value, um, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the URL parameter we just created, and we're going to bring in that record parameter there. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to set up a link in smart suite. Um, so the idea being that when the person uh, picks up the order, so whether it's on the specific date or you have to have a employee or yourself, you go in and mark off that has been picked up and you can set up an automation to email out this link here that we're going to build momentarily. So back into hello, what we can do now that this has been set up, I'm going to turn off the confetti and I'm going to go, thank you order to let it be submitted. And from here, we're going ahead and go ahead and publish it. So it's now been published. If we go back into the uh, share tab, you can see here, because we set up a URL parameter, it's got it pre-built here for us. So the X's is just kind of a placeholder. So that's what we're going to replace back in smart suite. So we're going to click copy. We'll go back into smart suite. We'll open up in the orders app. We'll open up the review link. And here we can clear that now. We'll bring in a contact function. Within the quotes, we'll paste the URL that we just copied, but we're going to get rid of all of the X's up until the equal sign. So that outside of the quotes, we'll add a comment and then we will add the record ID. So if you just start typing in REC, that'll give you this option here, the record ID, and that will automatically bring it in for you. You can see that there's no errors and error would pop up right here. So what we're basically doing is concatenating or stringing together that URL and adding the record ID. So I can go ahead, click update field. And now if I span this out, you can see the full uh, URL. So that's a uh, fill out form and it's adding the, this record ID to the record parameter. So I'm going to copy this. We'll go open up a new window. I'll paste that in. You can see that it's got a parameter here with the record being equal to the record ID. If I hit equals, it should open up our form. And here it just has the review comments. So in the background, the hidden field, it has connected and linked it to our order form. So I can just put in any sample text. I just put this as a test Hit submit. And if I close that, we can see that there's just been a linked record added here. So if I select it, we can see a review has been added to review comments section. And that is back in this application here and the records have been linked. So that's basically it. There's just a couple things that I'd wanted to show you. Um, the default values, like the date field and the order form, and then how to pre uh, records back from smart suite. So using, you know, formulas and, uh, the linked records and bringing in record ID, um, create an uh, additional form. So that review and comment. So that's a way that you could automate your reviews and comments. Makes it pretty simple. It makes it pretty simple to add those, uh, that type of functionality. Um, so yeah, basically the, the big things was the default values, pre-filling records and fields, and then how to hide fields as well within your fill out solution or fill out form and smart suite solution. So that's basically it for this video. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. Um, that's it for this video though. Hopefully you enjoyed um, Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can get more tips, tricks, and tutorials in the future.